Well, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas is due to travel to Qatar in the coming hours. Abbas is going to meet the Emir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani in Doha. He's expected to discuss the role of the Palestinian Authority in Gaza's future. We're going to bring in Moin Rabani. He's the co editor of Jadalia. It's an online news source focused on the Arab world. Very good to have you with us. So let's talk about this visit by the Palestinian Authority president. What role, if any, do you think that the Palestinian Authority could play in the future of Gaza? Well, I think um, Palestinian president Mahmoud Abbas has been engaged in a life and death struggle with relevance um, since the 7th of October. Um, on the one hand, uh, the, the West, and particularly the United States, are proposing that the Palestinian Authority play a role in post-war Gaza. On the other, they recognize that this is out of the question unless, um, this, unless the authority is rejuvenated. And in that context, there's been growing talk of replacing him um, with, uh, with someone who might be more effective. But I think the broader background here is that this is really all based on an illusion because the Palestinian Authority in its current form lacks legitimacy, lacks effectiveness, lacks credibility. It's been very substantially weakened by Israel with Western support, I should add, over the years. Um, and so I think um, given Qatar's role uh, along with Egypt as a key mediators, I think Abbas is very much trying to ensure that the Palestinian Authority maintains uh, a foot in the door. I think it's also unfortunate that it's only this issue that is bringing him onto the stage. Um, you know, his people have been subject to a genocidal Israeli assault for months now. And the only issue that seems to excite him is the future of the Palestinian Authority and his personal position um, in the political arena. Mm. You mentioned before that there had been uh, statements from Israel that the, the, the existing Palestinian Authority would not be acceptable, but a rejuvenated one, a changed one, uh, might be at some point. It was all very vague. But time is against that, isn't it? I mean, in terms of the, the, the timeline we're talking about, Israel is, is saying, is preparing its people for a long campaign. At the same time, it was being reported that Benjamin Netanyahu say, was saying that this latest, possibly last stage in the conflict, this offensive towards Rafah, had to be done before Ramadan, which is around about March the 10th. And that brings that time, timeline f much, uh, much closer. So one would imagine it's going to be very difficult for the Palestinian Authority, as you, from what you were saying, to have any rele relevance, or even if it attempts to try to change in a very short time span. Yes, well, I think Israel's plans for the Palestinian Authority, and for that matter, those of the, um, the U.S., would make it even less relevant. I think the only um, uh, realistic prospect in this context would be for the Palestinian Authority, for the Fatah movement, which for decades formed the spinal cord of the Palestinian national movement, um, to achieve a consensus with Hamas, with the other Palestinian factions, and to establish what is a genuinely national rather than a factional authority. Because also, I mean, any alternative will require the total eradication of Hamas for it to succeed. And Israel has already demonstrated that you know, while it might be good at genocide and mass killings, it's just not up to the task of militarily defeating Hamas. Mm. And if that restructuring goes ahead in some form, and it does have, the PA does have some sort of role in the future of Gaza, one would imagine there's going to be a knock-on effect for the West Bank as well, where in many cases it's had its most severe critics from Palestinians there who, as you've been describing, have been claiming that it has simply been, an, to some extent, an arm of the Israeli security forces and it has been unable to protect them. Yes, and I think that's part of the problem of the Palestinian Authority, that it has been having increasing challenges imposing its authority on the West Bank, which in, in a sense is its home base, very much challenged by Israel, of course. So if it can't do that in the West Bank, how does it expect to do that in the Gaza Strip? And yes, you know, there is opposition to Hamas and, and criticism of Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Of course there is. But the problem for Abbas is that doesn't translate into support for the Palestinian Authority. It's not a zero-sum game. Mm. We heard from our correspondent, Hani Mahmoud, uh, describing the conditions in Rafah there, and more broadly, the conditions that Gaza has been reduced to over the last several weeks. There is this question about the, the 
potential Israeli military op uh, operation in Rafah. And the key question is, where are people going to go? And there is a certain amount of speculation, isn't there, that they might go over the border into Egypt. But as I understand it, the Egyptian authorities are absolutely dead set against that because the last thing they want is a large number of Palestinian people coming into the Sinai that they then have to deal with. And that then puts them under a direct kind of path towards at least a breakdown in agreement, shall we say, between Israel, uh, between Egypt and Israel that exist at the moment. Yes, um, Egypt is dead set against the mass expulsion, uh, the forced transfer of Palestinians from the Gaza Strip into uh, the Sinai Desert. I think what Israel is now doing, of course, it's escalating its attacks on uh, Rafah. I think in part, it's a pressure tactic to improve their bargaining position with respect to a potential um, new truce and uh, prisoner exchange. I think it's also intended to pressure Egypt. And I think in the back of their heads, many Israeli leaders are hoping, well, if we make enough threats, then it doesn't really matter what Egypt says. Maybe these Palestinians will just force um, open the border and start leaving. Mm. Moon Rabani, we appreciate you being with us. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank, Thank you. you.